Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for listening to the second part of this uh, seminar, which is uh, about the precarious employment and uh, female labor. Uh, in this section, uh, I would like to go a little bit more detail into the Turkish context and discuss the outcomes of precarious employment for uh, women and uh, by uh, bringing to uh, studies of mine, which uh, actually uses different methodologies uh, and try to understand the implications of precarious employment, both uh, monetarily and uh, for other dimensions. But before I uh, go over the precarious employment, I would like to give a little bit background. And um, some of you might be already familiar uh, with this, but one of the peculiarities of the Turkish context, particularly given the level of its economic uh, development, uh, is the very low levels of female labor force participation, as you can see from uh, this figure. And uh, despite the strong uh, on the paper legal framework and long history of women's movement in uh, Turkey, actually gender equality in the country is uh, gloomy. So for example, according to the uh, very recent uh, rankings by the World Economic uh, Forum, uh, Turkey is uh, nearly towards the bottom of the list when it comes to uh, economy, uh, labor force participation and and uh, opportunities. Uh, and you can see that uh, labor force participation in the country has been almost always low uh, for women, but uh, this, uh, the, the, the decline and the stagnation uh, is also much uh, more significant uh, uh, for women. So for example, uh, in 2018, only one third of every woman, 30% uh, of every woman in Turkey was working as opposed to more than 70% uh, of men. Uh, and you can see also that uh, between 1990s and the 2000s, there have been uh, reductions in the labor force participation, both men and women. But again, uh, for women, this is particularly interesting because it already starts from a very low uh, level. And one of the reasons for for that is the stagnation of uh, manufacturing uh, or the increase in the service sector, uh, as we, as I mentioned in the first part of this lecture, which is also one of the root causes. Uh, one of the uh, factors that is giving rise uh, to precarious employment uh, all over the uh, world. And additionally, in the Turkish context, the frequent economic recessions that we have been observing since the 2000s, uh, or actually mid 1990s, is yet another reason why female labor force participation uh, is uh, has been on a, a decline and only very gradually recovering a, over the last uh, five uh, years. So in the beginning of the 1990s, uh, when the global value chains uh, started to outsource, uh, the Turkish manufacturing also was affected from this. And uh, many uh, uh, workers, especially women, were integrated into the global economic order through this uh, mechanism uh, with subcontracting and outsourcing, which are very important uh, types of uh, precarious employment in developing uh, countries. A big part of the textile factories in Turkey began to offer uh, home-based production and piecemeal uh, work to women instead of offering full-time uh, and formal uh, sector jobs. So this is partly the reason why we see uh, a relatively higher share of labor force participation at the beginning of the 1990s and starting with 1990s, uh, especially uh, through the 2000s, uh, the loss of this kind of outsourcing and subcontracting and the global value chains really relocating to uh, Asian countries is one of the reasons why uh, the labor force uh, uh, participation in Turkey for women uh, has been declining uh, even 
um, further. But one of the issues is that actually it is a very lopsided story when we talk about uh, Turkey, because on the one hand, we have a relatively high participation uh, and uh, economic activity of women uh, if they have higher education. So there is a bifurcated picture between the women who have no education opportunities and uh, backgrounds, uh, background versus the female university uh, graduates. So for example, if you look at the uh, university graduate uh, women in Turkey, their labor force participation is around 70%, which is still lower than the uh, men, but much, much higher than the women with primary school education, which is around uh, 25%. Uh, so you can see that um, there is a very big discrepancy depending on the endowments or uh, uh, particular education that has very important uh, consequences in, in the labor market for uh, women. And if you remember from the first part of the lecture, the uh, household responsibilities for Turkish women is much higher, uh, near the 4.5 uh, times of the time is spent on uh, unpaid activities, including childcare, elderly care, but also cleaning, cooking, any kind of uh, tasks that need to be conducted uh, at home. And these are uh, not usually uh, rewarded uh, financially. Uh, and uh, from this graph, uh, you can just see that actually the, uh, the differences between men and women by uh, education. And even though the Turkish man has higher employment levels and higher labor force participation uh, for every category, you can see that the differences are uh, immense, enormous for uh, people who have primary education. Uh, so uh, for example, a man with primary education uh, has uh, nearly 45% uh, higher labor for participation and 35% higher employment rates than uh, women, which uh, already shows us that in Turkey, a big majority of the female uh, females are discriminated or are, are in an underprivileged position because when they have lower education, they are almost automatically excluded from the uh, labor markets. And the second problem is that even when they enter labor markets, they, the type of the jobs that they find are very unique or very uh, precarious. Uh, so the male breadwinner model and the so patriarchal social relations uh, that give rise to the gender division of uh, labor and lack of opportunities for women to take part in wage and salaried economic activities uh, are uh, reinforced uh, when women enter into the labor force because when they enter, they are only able to find precarious non-standard employment employment, which uh, reproduces this kind of patriarchal relations and make women to allocate a lot of time, uh, either because of the expectations or because they are working in less paid, lower paid and uh, less, quote unquote, prestigious <clears throat> jobs. So uh, uh, what happens in Turkey is that uh, despite the slight increase in labor force participation in the recent years, the type of the jobs that women get are not necessarily working to their uh, advantage uh, because uh, the meager feminization of the uh, labor markets uh, in Turkey are not necessarily transforming the adverse conditions for women and the gender norms. In fact, the informal sector employment and the uh, subcontracting schemes, outsourcing and all kinds of precarious uh, arrangements are very much reinforcing and augmenting the patriarchal social relations and gender division of uh, labor, uh, where the women are uh, mostly employed in low paid jobs with limited social uh, security and no prospects of advancement, which means that the uh, household duties and unpaid care activities continue 
continue to be uh, falling on their uh, shoulders uh, disproportionately. Uh, so uh, when we say women are uh, employed disproportionately in precarious employment, uh, actually you can see that in the Turkish context, this is mostly informal jobs or informal sector economic activities. So if you look at the male versus female temporary arrangements, and here temporary means not having a permanent contract uh, uh, in Turkish Kadrolu. Uh, so any kind of subcontracting, any kind of agency uh, work uh, is considered as uh, temporary. And uh, the, the, there is no gender difference in the sense of share of male or the female workers in uh, such um, occupations in such contractual uh, types. But if you look at the male versus female uh, informal employment, you can see that despite a decline, uh, especially up until the 2015, the female informal employment is staggeringly high. Uh, I mean, it has been much higher in 2000, so around 72% uh, with a decline, but still more than 50% uh, of the women are uh, employed in the uh, informal sector, which is uh, a very, very uh, high uh, percentage. So among all the working women uh, in Turkey, more than half of them are in the informal sector. And uh, you can imagine the informality in Turkey, even though it's heterogeneous, mostly means uh, uh, low wage and uh, uh, legally unprotected uh, work. Uh, and one of the reasons why uh, we see such type of precariousness, informality in the Turkish uh, case is that the, uh, the, the, as the Turkish manufacturing firms with globalization and uh, <clears throat> opening up the uh, uh, borders and export-led industrialization, uh, basically uh, started to use untapped female worker as a cost-cutting mechanism. Uh, and they uh, saved uh, on labor by informal arrangements and home-based schemes. So this has been a part of a trend that has been going on since the 1990s, these piecemeal home-based informal contracts or informal work arrangements between the global value chains uh, at any stage of these uh, value supply chains and uh, women, but also in the Turkish context, again, not very uh, specific or unique, that uh, the internal migration and the urbanization, which escalated uh, in the 1990s, uh, cause low educated women to leave their agricultural jobs uh, and uh, cities, uh, uh, sorry, the villages and the <clears throat> provincial areas uh, and become unemployed uh, in the cities, which further decrease the reservation wage uh, in the Turkish context. So uh, the, the, the informal arrangements that are part of the global value chains, especially in manufacturing, uh, but also uh, in some service sectors, uh, internal migration uh, and the low education opportunities of uh, given to Turkish women are the primary reasons why they have been disproportionately employed in um, informal sector and continue to be employed uh, in these uh, jobs. So one of the problems, uh, obviously, is that informality in Turkey means no, such, uh, no social security in most uh, cases. There are very few exceptions where people are paid enough to contribute uh, on their uh, own. And uh, I would like to here just mention two uh, studies that I recently undertook. Uh, one is looking at the wage effects of different types of employment in Turkey across gender. And what I have found is that indeed temporary employment uh, uh, reduces the wages in uh, Turkey for women, uh, although not as much as informal employment. So the worst type of precarity in Turkish context for women is informal employment. And surprisingly, temporary employment, uh, not having a permanent position, uh, do not have wage penalties uh, for men. Obviously, Obviously, there can be other disadvantages to temporary employment, but at least the earnings decrease, uh, the losses in earnings is not one of the <clears throat> adverse 
uh, influences uh, that men have to suffer, whereas in the case of women, for example, the hourly earnings are uh, cut by 11% uh, for any woman, keeping everything else constant, including age, education, uh, the sector occupation, and firm level characteristics uh, earn 11% uh, lower than a person simply having a permanent contract. And uh, the picture becomes even more uh, despicable for informal employment, uh, where women lose on average uh, 37 percent uh, of their wages, uh, of their hourly wages, as opposed to 15 percent. So informal employment uh, lowers the earnings uh, for everyone, both for uh, men and women, but uh, the the magnitude, the uh, the the impact is much higher for women, and this. 37% are the decline roughly corresponds to uh, 1,150 Turkish Liras for a person, assuming the person gets a uh, minimum wage. Uh, and uh, you can imagine in the Turkish context, more than 1,000 Lira per month is uh, quite an amount uh, uh, and makes a difference uh, in your uh, wages. Not that it will lift you out of poverty, but uh, uh, it is is quite, uh, the, the scale is uh, very uh, important. So what uh, I would, uh, what I conclude from these findings is that the uh, precariousness is obviously bad, uh, especially if it is informal employment for both genders, but the, the outcomes, the conditions are worsened uh, for women for the reasons, uh, uh, especially due to the lower bargaining power and reservation wages. In other words, uh, gender uh, here matters a lot for informal employment and also temporary employment because the employers, the companies have the power to push down the wages even further for women, since uh, women have no other um, possibility uh, but to get out of the labor force. So the, the uh, employment opportunities uh, in standard jobs or in higher quality jobs are uh, much, much weaker uh, for women. And uh, also women are employed in these positions because their labor is undervalued and there are societal perceptions about women having uh, or women being obliged to greater responsibility at home. So in a way, almost the paid activities in the labor market of women are seen as supplementary rather than uh, primary. The second set of findings are coming from the interviews that I have conducted on the field with uh, uh, precarious employees in very different uh, positions, both including the formal and the informal, uh, as well as uh, temporary positions. And what has been found here is not uh, is quite intuitive uh, in the sense that uh, all interviews mentioned job security, no social security benefits, and lack of statutory rights as their most crucial uh, problems. Uh, and uh, you can see that uh, from the quotes, uh, being a woman on top of having a precarious job surfaces as an additional dimension. So in all of the interviews where these women were asked about their uh, the, 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 the possibilities of reconciliation of work and life, attitudes at the workplace and collective representation, being a female, being a woman, again and again was the common element that uh, came, that emerged in uh, all of the <clears throat> talks that I have. Uh, so what they mentioned is that the inability to participate in collective bargaining and unionization, the biased attitudes in the workplace, and extremely limited exit options are the fundamental hindrances experienced by the female workers in uh, precarious employment in Turkey. And again, there is nothing uh, uh, specific about the uh, 
findings, uh, but the, uh, the one of the things, uh, one of the things that needs to be highlighted is the very rigid gender roles uh, and the division of labor that puts uh, a very high share of the unpaid activities, household responsibilities, uh, and uh, care. Uh, uh, that, that that put these into the hands of the uh, women, and uh, like everywhere else, uh, women in precarious employment are also suffering from low wages, limited social security benefits, and very serious threat of the uh, job loss risks. You can see that uh, the, uh, the the concerns uh, differ from person to person, but on the overall, what they mention is that uh, the uh, employers have a very very high uh, power in the bargaining. And this is mainly because the reservation wage of the women are very, very low. The only chance that they have uh, is uh, to be dismissed, to be fired. And in that case, uh, they have to mostly leave the labor force or find another job that is uh, equivalently bad or have uh, poor working uh, conditions. It has been also uh, raised that the unemployment in Turkey is increasing and the wages as a result are quite low. So there is always the threat, the insecurity of uh, employment uh, losses, which creates a lot of stress and adds uh, to the pressures uh, at home. And uh, also it has been mentioned that again uh, in the Turkish context, the economic crisis, the economic downturn is making the labor market uh, situation to go sore for everyone, but especially for women, because they are told to be much more dispensable uh, for uh, the uh, employers, and uh, they will be the first ones to uh, cut down if there is a need, if there is a uh, restructuring or recession uh, in the uh, economy. So overall, what we have seen is that uh, the precarious employment and in the context of Turkey, uh, informal employment is the uh, major source of precarity, uh, has many adverse effects uh, on women. And these adverse effects are because of the patriarchal relations and the much lower chances, much lower opportunities uh, women have uh, in the labor market, which actually uh, aggravates uh, the already <coughs> negative impact the precarity has on uh, everybody in the labor market. So let me stop here and I hope uh, uh, this at least uh, gave all of us a chance to uh, perhaps go into more detail about what type of uh, precariousness uh, these women are uh, experiencing and uh, what can be done uh, about it. But let me finish the seminar here. And once again, thanks everyone for listening and for uh, the team of the Turkey Beyond Borders to give me this opportunity.